This virtual festival has been organized by Youth Celebrate Diversity, and the festival is proudly sponsored by Boeing. Hi, I'm Katina, and for the next interview, we're going to interview someone who has a Jewish faith. So, hi, can you please introduce yourself and your faith and practice? Um, my name is Kirsten Miller. Um, I'm Jewish. Uh, I live in Denver, Colorado. Um, my day job, I am an environmental engineer. Um, in my spare time, um, at least before the pandemic, I taught um, at my synagogue here in Denver. Um, since then, I have not. And then also in my spare time, I sit on the board of directors for Youth Celebrate Diversity. So uh, this organization means a lot to me. Well, awesome. awesome. So what's one thing about your practice that is often misunderstood? I think there's a big misunderstanding about what Jewish belief and tradition, what it even looks like, what it even is. I think there's a definite misconception that Judaism is somehow Christianity without the Jesus component. And it's it's just really not. Um, there are many different sects of Judaism that differ in the extent to which people observe Jewish law, they differ, they differ in the extent to which they perceive of the divinity of Jewish texts, among other things. But despite our internal differences, um, they all involve traditions, rituals, beliefs that are uniquely Jewish. And um, I think one thing that contributes to that uh, is the phrase Judeo-Christian values, um, which doesn't help. Um, Judeo-Christian values don't exist. Um, that is a synonym for traditional, typically white, Western Christian values. And those are values that even progressive Christians who I know disagree with, um, let alone Jews. Um, Jews had nothing to do with the formulation of these values. And more than that, have historically been like systemically excluded from and terrorized by places that claim these values. And even to add to that, the phrase itself is often explicitly used to promote Islamophobia and to cast Muslims as an other, a threatening other. Yeah, those are certain yeah, things that I haven't so thought about before, which is interesting. So what's the common stereotype or myth about them and how is it false? I mean, there are innumerable um, stereotypes about Judaism. There's far too many to name, but I think I can break them down into two categories. The first is kind of the stuff you see on TV, like the Jewish mother or the Jewish doctor or lawyer or accountant. And I, I do think those are mostly harmless because it's often being portrayed by actual Jews. Um, and there are definite aspects of truth to those. Um, but at the same time, those stereotypes portray Jews as a kind of monolith, oftentimes. Um, specifically, it portrays them as Ashkenazi Jews, meaning Jews of European descent. Um, they're often well-to-do East Coasters or specifically New Yorkers. And that really does erase the fact that there are a ton of Jews who don't fit into that idea. It ignores Sephardic Jews who originated in Spain and have very different cultural traditions. It ignores Mizrahi Jews who are native to the Middle East. And it ignores Jews of color, Asian Jews, Black Jews, who people don't even think exist. So that's the first stereotype. The second is far more sinister and involves um, overt anti-Semitic tropes, anti-Semitic conspiracy theories, some of which have existed for millennia and are both extremely untrue and extremely harmful. Again, I can't possibly cover all of them, but I'd say that one that comes up probably the most often is this idea of Jews as greedy elites who control like all media, all banking, all government. Um, when you hear the name Soros or the Rothschilds, that's a dog whistle toward that theme. Um, again, like Jewish just caricatures, um, Jews as Jesus killers. Um, there's, there, I mean, honestly, there are, there are so many and they're really pretty devastating. Yeah, I really see that. And I've heard a lot of those stories before and it's just really sad to me. So what is one thing you want people to know about Judaism? One thing I would want people to know, um, and I, I touched on this earlier, but I would want people to know that there are just, there's so many different sects of Judaism out there. And while we very much share core ideas and practices, 
um, and shared foundation for the way that we celebrate holidays um, and conduct services. What that really looks like really differs between individuals. And there are many Jews, myself included, who don't fit neatly into one sect. Like I belong to and teach at a reform synagogue, but I don't consider myself a reform Jew. I consider myself a, a Jew. And I simply see myself as a Jew with understanding that the things that I value most about Judaism and prioritize in my practice aren't necessarily going to be the same things that other Jews of any denomination are going to prioritize. Um, beyond that, I would want people to know that Judaism is an ethno-religion. And I say that specifically because there are many Jews who are atheists. Um, and they don't, they have very little to no ties to the religious aspects of Judaism, but still maintain a strong Jewish cultural identity. And they are still very much Jews. So there's not one single statement I can make along the lines of like, all Jews believe this, all Jews do this, um, because it really differs. Even in terms of belief, the way that I conceive of the divine um, looks very different from other Jews, even Jews within my personal community. And it even looks different to myself from day to day. And that's perfectly acceptable in Judaism. Yeah, that's actually really interesting thought because a lot of the time religion or spiritual practice is very personal and it doesn't really, it differs from person to person. So it's really cool to know that the Judaism is that way as well. And how has your spiritual practice impacted your life? Um, I'd say three ways. Uh, first, community. Um, shared values, uh, shared, unfortunately shared fears, but being within that community, that place of support, you have a shoulder to air your, you know, your fears. Um, just having a place where you feel like you belong is so powerful. I think um, the regularity of Jewish practice really resonates with me. Judaism is a great toolkit to navigate time. Um, we keep time very deliberately. Our holidays are celebrated very deliberate times of year. They're supposed to make you feel very deliberate feelings. Um, every week we have Shabbat, which is a time to just chill out. Um, even if you're a very observant Jew, there's times of the day where you're expected to pray. And that the regularity really calms my frantic mind. Um, and then lastly, I'd say that for me, Judaism is equal parts intellectual and spiritual. Like I love having the freedom to really question and argue our texts. For example, that the Talmud is a collection of Jewish laws that has come to exist over, that came to exist over hundreds of years of rabbis arguing with each other. And that sentiment still continues. Um, and the spirit of questioning for us modern Jews comes when we're dealing with pieces of our stories that challenge us because they feel outdated or unbelievable or they promote inequity. But a real cornerstone of Judaism is that we're allowed to question and wrestle with our stories in a way that's thoughtful. I don't ever feel like I'm being told what to believe, but I'm given a toolkit to understand it for myself. Yeah, yeah that sounds yeah. pretty incredible, actually. It sounds really cool. And lastly, how can people best support and respect your community? Um, I'd say first, learn about anti-Semitism. Um, that's a big undertaking, but believe Jews when we say that something is anti-Semitic. Um, I'd say don't force people to be the right kind of Jew um, in order to take their experiences seriously because anti-Semitism affects all Jews regardless of political affiliation. Um, so dismissing anti-Semitism that someone experiences on the basis of political differences truly dismisses anti-Semitism against all of us. And it really, opens the door to more of it. Um, I'd also say, come learn who we are. Um, we don't, Jews don't evangelize. We don't try to convert people or bring people in, but we are very welcoming to people who just wanna learn who we are. So you can stop by a service and you won't be expected to believe anything, especially right now, everything's on Zoom anyway. Um, check, out, check out some religious services online, just see what we're doing. No pressure there. Um, Lastly, I'd just say, make sure you're looking out for Jewish holidays if you're planning something. This came up recently with the high holidays that just happened. Um, I actually got removed from two work projects because they were unable to accommodate my time off for Yom Kippur, which was kind of devastating and just hurtful. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. I really, really enjoyed this and learning about Judaism and 
just more about it because I didn't really know a lot before. So thank you. Like it was incredible talking to you. I appreciate you having me and letting me talk. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye.